Hi everyone. I want to spend some time talking with you uh, about the paper two assignment sheet. So um, if you would go with me to uh, first content up at the top of your Brightspace course page and then scroll down in the left hand toolbar to major paper assignments and related materials and then click on Paper 2 Assignment Sheet Rhetorical Analysis. You can then follow along with me if you would. So for the second major paper of the course, you'll conduct what we call a rhetorical analysis of either Ain't I a Woman by Sojourner Truth or Salvation by Langston Hughes. So you would choose one of those two and it's always a good idea to choose the piece that you find to be more interesting because then your writing will reflect that interest. So here are the important dates. Um, Tuesday the 28th of September is our idea worksheet day. You remember we did this for um, paper one, so it's very much the same. You'll upload your answers to the idea worksheet questions um, no later than 11.59 p.m. on the 28th, and you'll do that by clicking on the Assignments tab. And then you want to check back there. Um, later on, I'll uh, send you an announcement and an email out when I'm done, but you want to check back over um, a couple of days to note my comments and suggestions before you start working on the rough draft, because I'll give you a sense of direction there. And then Monday, the 4th of October, is when you'll submit your rough draft of Paper 2 by 11.59 p.m. You'll again click on the Assignments tab up at the top of our Brightspace course page and look for Rough Draft of Paper 2. Follow the instructions there and submit your draft. And remember that 10 points are deducted from your Paper 2 grade if you do not upload the draft before 11.59 p.m. on Monday, the 4th. So... Again, you want to check back, you want to look at my comments on the rough draft and enact my suggestions as you're writing the final draft. Because remember, any suggestion that I make that you do not enact, that's probably going to be point deductions. I'm making those suggestions in order to help you. And then Wednesday the 13th, your final draft of Paper 2 is due, again before 11.59 p.m. And again, you'll go to Assignments and look for Paper, paper bleh, Paper to final draft. Um, remember the po policy <clears throat> there um, with those final drafts. Ten points are deducted from your grade for every calendar day the paper is, is late, including the day that it's due and weekends, and I don't accept them after five days. And the only um, exception to that rule is if you've asked for an, an official extension due to a valid, and I stress the word valid, reason. Um, you're really sick, there's been a terrible emergency, you've had a death in your immediate family, etc. That is the only um, legitimate reason. So the specifics, this paper should be two and one half to three pages in length. So two and one half page minimum and, and they, they need to be full pages. So if you submit less than that, you're going to get point deductions. Um, if you go over the three pages a little, that's fine. That's not a big deal, but you want to make sure you get to the two and a half pages. Obviously type double spaced in Times New Roman 12 point font with standard margins. And this time you must use quotes and um, paraphrases from the text you're analyzing, citing them in MLA citation, both in the body of your paper, <coughs> we call that in text citation, and also on a separate works cited sheet at the end of your paper using MLA formatting. So here's the rhetorical situation. As a college student, you've been asked to write a rhetorical analysis. So remember, when we hear that word rhetoric, we think two words, effective communication, effective communication. So you're making an analysis of the effective communication of either Sojourner Truth in Ain't I a Woman or Langston Hughes in Salvation. And so your paper needs to conform as always to a formal, formal academic structure. So you've got your introductory paragraph with the thesis as the very last sentence there of that paragraph, your supporting paragraphs and your formal conclusion. 
Your audience consists of me and your classmates. Imagine we've read your chosen text before, and we have in this class, but maybe it's been a little while, so you might have to refresh our memories a little bit. That's sort of a good way to think about approaching your audience. This time, you're not taking a position on whether you agree with the author's views. That is not the point of this paper. This is not an argumentative position paper. No, no, no. This is a rhetorical analysis paper, so you must get this clear. You are not agreeing with Sojourner Truth or Langston Hughes. Absolutely not. Rather, you are offering a clear, persuasive analysis of his or her writing techniques and appeals. So you're going to talk about how well this writer did with ethos, logos, pathos, right? The three rhetorical appeals. And with rhetorical techniques like tone and style and things like that. So the objective is to examine how the writer used language to effectively communicate his or her purpose in order to reach the readers. Remember, your concerns in this paper are with the how and the why. So in other words, you're not just relating or summarizing a message this time like we did in paper one. You're not agreeing or disagreeing with the writer's points of view. Absolutely not. Rather, you're uncovering more complex ways of understanding how the author constructed the message. You are critiquing the writing itself. You're analyzing the rhetoric. The effective communication. That's what you're doing. So you're going to note every possible technique and appeal that that writer has used. Ethos, logos, pathos, the, the three appeals, right? You're going to note all the possible techniques that that writer has used. So um, what's the tone, the style like? Did the author use alliteration, personification? Um, did the author use language that is very formal sounding or was it more everyday speak? How did that work? Um, how uh, effective was it? And so you're noticing every detail of the way in which the text is written and presented, and then you're formulating an intelligent, reasonable explanation for what these elements mean. So for example, did the author use more logos, logic, than pathos, emotion? Why might that be the case? Or was it just the opposite? Did the author mainly rely on pathos, emotion? and not have a lot of logos or logic in the piece. Um, or maybe there was a balance of the three. Does the author employ a lot of descriptive language via metaphor or simile rather than just a straightforward style? Why do you think the author made that choice? What is the effect? Does the author use humor or sarcasm? How? Um, why would this particular author choose to write maybe a funny, humorous text as opposed to a more serious one? So these are what you're doing when you write a rhetorical analysis. To conduct a successful rhetorical analysis paper, here are the questions you need to be asking yourself as you're writing. So what is the author's specific message in this text? Even though you're not agreeing or disagreeing with it, you want to be clear as to what it is. What appeals, ethos, logos, and or pathos is the author using? How do they help make this text more effective and successful? So quote the passages and then explain how they work. And remember, if there's an absence of one of those appeals, why may, might the author have made that choice to not use that appeal? What rhetorical techniques or strategies is the writer using? Repetition, is there a phrase being repeated like with ain't I a woman, ain't I a woman? Um, rhetorical questions, ain't I a woman is also a rhetorical question, a question you need to think about, right? And ponder, but not necessarily just answer with yes or no. Hyperbole, sort of that over-the-top um, emphasis, metaphor, simile, personification, alliteration, whatever it might be, um, does the author employ? And you can refer to that sheet on rhetorical techniques to refresh your memory about the various techniques that authors can use. You want to quote the passages and then explain how they're working. What about tone and style? Does the author use formal, elevated language, or is it just everyday language? Does the author employ irony or humor? How do these elements work to put forth the message effectively? How might the target audience, the main audience to whom that writer was appealing, 
influence the author's choices. So we know that Sojourner Truth, for example, is appealing to a primarily white female audience, right? Um, what is the impact of this particular author's choices in terms of the strategies and appeals being used? Are they effective in communicating the message? Who is that primary target audience? Who's the secondary invoked audience? So that's the folks that weren't targeted, right? They weren't there in the moment Sojourner made the speech, for example. They weren't targeted by Langston Hughes, but they're brought into the rhetorical situation later on, like us, like a, a college class studying these works. Have you correctly cited your chosen text in MLA style, both in the body of your paper, in text, and on a separate works cited sheet at the end of your paper? So. Here are some examples of a possible intro, thesis, and game plan for paper two. So the first one I give you is for Sojourner Truth's Ain't I a Woman. Being both black and female during a time of unprecedented discrimination required a tremendous amount of courage and determination. However, openly speaking out against injustice while being a black woman in the 19th century demanded exponential bravery. Sojourner Truth, originally named Isabella Bonfrey, was a former slave who delivered an extraordinary speech at the 1851 Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio. A rhetorical analysis of her famous talk entitled Ain't I a Woman illustrates a masterful balance of ethos, logos, and pathos, in addition to techniques such as repetition and the use of rhetorical questions. So this writer did a really good job. Notice the hook there, that very first sentence. Being both black and female during a time of unprecedented discrimination required a tremendous amount of courage and determination. However, openly speaking out against injustice while being a black woman in the 19th century demanded exponential bravery. So here's a statement that's very broad and that everybody can kind of understand and relate to. Everybody knows. Okay, if you're a black woman during the time of slavery, um, it takes a lot of courage and determination just to be black and just to be a black woman, right, at that time. But to speak out openly in a public forum against injustice the way Sojourner Truth did as a black woman in this time demanded a huge amount of courage. So that statement is broad. It kind of reels us in. We want to know more about this story. And then you see the writer begin to narrow in to his or her thesis. So Sojourner Truth. Now we know who this person is who's speaking out. Originally named Isabella Bonfrey was a former slave who delivered an extraordinary speech at the 1851 Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio. So now we're getting the writer's name. We're getting the title of the piece, all information we have to know right off the bat, and where this speech was delivered. Um, a rhetorical analysis, here's our thesis, of her famous talk entitled Ain't I a Woman, illustrates a masterful balance of ethos, logos, and pathos in addition to techniques such as repetition and the use of rhetorical questions. So the thesis statement answers the prompt. It tells you, folks, this is a rhetorical analysis. And here's the title of her talk. And she balances ethos, logos, and pathos really well. And in addition to that, she's using techniques like repetition and rhetorical questions. So this writer has laid out the game plan of his or her paper. What he or she is gonna talk about in the body now in the rest of the paper. Um, ethos, logos, pathos, repetition, rhetorical questions. And so you're going to need to offer proof through quotes from Ain't I a Woman of the ethos, the logos, the pathos, and the specific techniques that you mentioned. The body of your paper and your thesis have to go together, right? <clears throat> Here's an example with Hughes's salvation. As part of achieving maturity, many individuals have experienced the quest to determine for themselves whether to accept the religious beliefs upon which they were raised. In Langston Hughes' salvation, a story from his autobiographical novel entitled The Big C. The author related such a journey as he recounts an old-fashioned revival he attended at age 12 in which he felt pressured to quote-unquote get saved. A rhetorical analysis of Hughes' memorable text reveals a pathos-driven narrative 
that also demonstrates ethos, as a young Hughes does not wish to lie about actually having seen Christ. Moreover, this story demonstrates the effective use of techniques such as realistic dialogue, imagery, and tone. Now, you'll notice in both of these good examples of intro and thesis, there's no use of first person I. There's no you or your second person. The language is elevated. It is college level language, right? So look at the hook in this example. It's a broad statement that all of us can relate to. As part of growing up, part of achieving maturity, a lot of us are experiencing this quest to figure out whether we should accept the beliefs that we were raised with, right? There's a message we can all relate to. Now watch how the author begins to narrow in Langston Hughes' Salvation, a story from his autobiographical novel entitled The Big C. The author relates just such a journey as he recounts an old-fashioned revival he attended at age 12 in which he felt pressure to get saved. So now we've got the author's full name. We've got the title of the text correctly punctuated because it's a short piece in quotation marks. We've got the title of the book from which it comes correctly punctuated in italics because that's the larger work from which the shorter work came. And then we reach the thesis statement, a rhetorical analysis. So the writer's telling you, here's what I'm doing. It's a rhetorical analysis of Hugh's memorable text reveals a pathos-driven narrative. So it's driven by emotion that also demonstrates ethos, right? And um, it explains why this text is demonstrating ethos because Hughes doesn't lie. He doesn't wanna lie that he's actually seen Christ in front of his eyes. And so that shows him as being an honest, credible kind of person. Um, moreover, there's a transition word. This story demonstrates the effective use of techniques such as realistic dialogue, imagery, and tone. So again, there's a road map there of the paper. So for this kind of intro and thesis, you've got to offer evidence through quotes from the story that this text mainly relies on pathos, emotion, to reach the reader, which it does. You should also include examples of ethos, so how the writer sets himself up to appear credible and trustworthy to us as readers through his extreme sense of honesty and integrity, i.e. he doesn't just simply head on down to the altar like good old Wesley, right? Rather, he feels he's telling a lie to do so when he has not actually yet seen Jesus or a light. And then finally, your essay should include sections that demonstrate the use of that realistic dialogue. So we see Hughes um, sort of having the voice of a young boy at certain times, right? Um, the images that we get of the actual inside of the church and what's going on, the tone, the way he uses some lines that actually sound like a 12-year-old boy, for example, to create a successful uh, story. So that is the paper two assignment sheet. <clears throat> and in a different video, I'm going to talk to you about transitional and linking words because they're awfully important to your success as a writer, along with this idea of attribution, how we can attribute our quotes, and rhetorical techniques. So um, we've, we've mentioned the fact that you need to be talking about rhetorical techniques in paper two. So in my, my second video, I'm gonna talk to you about that as well. So thanks for your time.